Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So, in my last video, I, I have explained about all the high yield reactions in uh, TCA cycle. So, all the important reactions that are needed for the examination point of view. So, I have explained all those reactions in TCA cycle along with the applied aspects and uh, clinical scenarios or the inhibition of TCA cycle, all those details I have explained. The link for that video is appearing right now on the right top corner. Please watch the video on TCA cycle for more details. This video is all about explanation for regulation of TCA cycle. So in this video, I will be explaining you regulation of TCA cycle. So before we get into the regulation, so let me take you to quickly uh, revise TCA cycle very briefly. So acetyl-CoA condenses with oxaloacetate to make citrate. This, this is done by citrate synthase irreversible reaction. Citrate is converted to isocitrate by aconitase enzyme. That's a reversible reaction. Isocitrate converted to alpha ketoglutarate done by isocitrate dehydrogenase reaction. This is a irreversible reaction. Alpha ketoglutarate is converted to succinyl-CoA by alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Another irreversible reaction. Succinyl-CoA converted to succinate by succinate thiokinase. Succinate is converted to fumarate by fumarate dehydrogenase enzyme. Fumarate is going into malate by malate, sorry, fumarase enzyme. Malate is going into oxaloacetate by malate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, out of all these three reactions, sorry, all these reactions, there are some reactions which are irreversible here, and that is conversion of oxaloacetate with acetyl CoA to make citrate. That's an irreversible reaction. Now, conversion of isocitrate into alpha ketoglutarate is an irreversible reaction in TCA cycle. And the third irreversible reaction in TCA cycle is conversion of alpha ketoglutarate into succinyl CoA. Now, let's move on to see a regulation proper. One of the most regulated or highly regulated enzyme in TCA cycle is isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme. So isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme is a highly regulated enzyme in TCA cycle. So if you want to control the pace of TCA cycle or the speed of TCA cycle, you really need to hold on to this enzyme, isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme. Okay, so what are the factors that control isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme? In order to explain you the factors that control isocitrate dehydrogenase, so I'll be giving you a scenarios, two scenarios. My first scenario is consider that you are going to a gym for workout. You are going to a gym just to maybe you want to lose your weight. So you get onto the treadmill or you want to build muscles. So you want to, you are going to work out to like you do weights. So whenever you get onto a treadmill or start doing weights, so especially when you get onto a treadmill, so initially your respiratory rate do not that much change. There won't be any significant change. But as you go on increasing the speed of a treadmill, as you go on increasing your running speed, so your respiratory rate will also increase. That means as your electron transport chain is running faster, it's because you need ATPs. So when we work out, so there will be consumption of ATPs and there will be rise in the levels of ADPs. So there will be whenever there is an increase in ADP levels. So there is more ADP means there is lack of energy in the cell. So what will happen? So this increase in ADP, it should make sure. So it means it is going to come to TCA cycle and it's going to stimulate or act as a positive modulator on isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme. So excess levels of adenosine, uh, adenosine diphosphate acting as a positive allosteric modulator on isocitrate dehydrogenase. It means the activity of isocitrate dehydrogenase increases. That means conversion of isocitrate into alpha ketoglutarate, it goes on much faster. 
and that's how TCA cycle speed will increase. So that is why whenever we work out, so ATP ADP ratio it will decrease. It means ADP levels will be increased, ATP levels will be less. Increase ADP ADPs will act as a positive modulator on isocitrate dehydrogenase, thereby. TCS cycle, uh, pace of TCS cycle will increase. So ADP will make sure that TCS cycle is going on at a higher rate and that will give rise to NADH, FADH and all that. They will be taken into electron transport chain thereby uh, electron transport chain can synthesize ATPs for much needed energy for activity. That's what happens. And also when we do physical activity, so there will be rise in calcium level, rise in the calcium level in the matrix of mitochondria. What this calcium does? So calcium will have a positive effect on isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme. Just like ADP, calcium has got a positive effect on isocitrate dehydrogenase, thereby TCA cycle increases its pace. That makes sense here because when the person is exercising, so calcium level is important there because that helps in actin myosin contraction and for actin myosin contraction to break the contraction, so you need ATP. So ATP has to be maintained, ATP levels need to be maintained and for that electron transport chain needs NADH and FADH2 and main source for that is TCA cycle. That's why Calcium will make sure that isocitrate dehydrogenase will be active. And also note that role of ADP and calcium on pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex. Pyruvate is the one which is converted to acetyl-CoA by pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So ADP and calcium will keep pyruvate dehydrogenase complex in its dephosphorylated condition thereby pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is active and it will produce more and more pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. Regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, I have a video on that, link for that is appearing right now on the right top corner. If you can view that video, if you are interested in knowing how pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is regulated especially how ADP and calcium whenever there is a need is there for energy and also in the muscle contraction is going on how these two molecules will make sure that pyruvate is coming into acetyl CoA molecule and these acetyl CoA molecules are getting into TCA cycle so down here in the TCA cycle I am explaining how ADP and calcium same molecules how they will make sure that TCA cycle is running faster basically by acting on isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme. And also note that calcium acts as a positive modulator on alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex also, thereby TCA cycle is running at a faster rate. Now, whenever person is in fed condition, consider that you are in fed condition, not working out, you, are just, you just ate food and you are just watching TV. So you are basically under well fed condition and basal condition and resting. During this time you don't really need ATPs, not need of ATPs are very less. Electron transport chain is running slow, your respiratory rate, uh, respiratory rate is less, it means so the ATP levels are more than ADP levels. So because of this, when the electron transport chain is slowed down, so there will be increase in the levels of NADH plus H plus. So this NADH plus H plus will have a negative effect on three enzymes in TCA cycle. NADH plus H plus will have a negative effect on isocitrate dehydrogenase, so it will have a negative effect on alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase enzyme complex and also NADH plus H plus will have a negative effect on malate dehydrogenase complex. So there are three enzymes in TCA cycle which will be negatively modulated by NADH plus H plus concentration and that is isocitrate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and malate dehydrogenase. So when we are resting and in well-fed condition, when the electron transport chain is slow, so there will be less consumption of NADH plus H plus because we simply do not need ATPs. 
that is why we don't need this TCA cycle to go on at a higher rate that is that makes sense because we don't need ATPs during this time that is why these three important enzymes here they will be negatively modulated and the overall pace of TCA cycle decreases so in the isocitrate dehydrogenase activity decreases under well-fed conditions so there will be elevation of isocitrate molecule and this isocitrate now it will go back into citrate for citrate molecule so citrate molecule builds up this is what happens under well-fed condition when we are resting so the citrate now it's going to move out of mitochondria into cytoplasm by citrate transporter and in the uh, cytoplasm citrate is broken down into acetyl coa and oxalocetate and acetyl coa can be diverted into fatty acid formation and also it can be diverted into cholesterol formation so that's what happens under well fed condition that when isocitrate dehydrogenase activity goes down isocitrate increases since it's a reversible reaction so isocitrate is going back into citrate and citrate will move out of mitochondria into the cytoplasm by citrate transporter and in the cytoplasm citrate is broken down back into acetyl coa and oxalocetate and then acetyl coa in the cytoplasm will go into fatty acid synthesis and cholesterol biosynthesis that's the fate of your uh, TCA cycle under well fed condition and also some of the citrate whenever citrate builds up so at high concentration citrate itself will have a feedback negative effect on citrate synthase enzyme this happens when there is concentration is building up too much so these are the important reactions on the, where the regulation is going on on tca cycle to control the pace of tca cycle that's about it so i hope this video has made sense in uh, explaining or uh, to know understand uh, how the tca cycle is regulated both in fasting condition and in well fed condition Thanks for watching and see you again in my next video. Till then, take care.